All right, what's up guys and girls? Adam Frater here, calisthenics athlete. I know I haven't been on YouTube in a bit, but I'm back today with a video that you're all gonna need to hear. These are my top eight things that I wish I knew when I started calisthenics. Now, I've been doing the sport for a long time, which means a lot of trial and error. It means a lot of injuries. And my goal is to shorten that window for you, shorten the time that it takes you to progress from exercise to exercise, to eliminate your possibilities of being injured, and to overall give you the tools to be that much better of an athlete in that much shorter time. You guys ready to dive in? Hit that like button, hit that subscribe, and let me show you my favorite eight things that I wish I knew when I first started calisthenics. Let's go. All right, number one, warm up your wrists. Yes, your wrists. Your hands are where you make contact with the bar. They're where you make contact with the floor for handstand push-ups. It is crucial to build up the strength in your forearm muscles. It is crucial to warm up your wrist and increase that fluid motion so that you don't get tendonitis. That is the most common injury with people in calisthenics is you get to the beach, you get to the park, you're so excited to dive in right away that you don't warm up your grip muscles. Right away you get a flash pump, which means all the muscles just shoot into your forearms, they feel extremely tight, and you don't have the strength that you want. Eventually you start to build up tendonitis in the elbow, in the wrist, in the forearm, and it just impinges on your training. So I cannot stress this enough by loosening and warming up and creating more flexibility in your wrist, you are gonna be that much stronger and that much better of an athlete. All right, next. Don't stop training your legs. Too many calisthenics guys are so impressed with being able to do handstand push-ups and flags and planches and levers that they don't think about the importance of your legs. Now, maybe you don't care about jumping, running, sprinting, but you have an entire life ahead of you. So if you build a body just for calisthenics, then you're not gonna be well-rounded enough for when you wanna go on that hike. You're not gonna be well-rounded enough for when you wanna take on that Spartan challenge or run a marathon. Now, even if you don't think that you're ever gonna do those things, what's really important is about having a well-balanced body. You don't wanna have things that are imbalances. These imbalances, they create issues over time. So if you're a true athlete, whether calisthenics or not, you're not only gonna train your upper body, you're gonna train your lower body as well and be fully well-rounded and built as an athlete should be built. Number three, do this stretch. Now, you might see this as being familiar from yoga. It's called the up dog. The reason this stretch is so important is because in calisthenics, we do so many moves that require a lot of pulling muscles. We're working our back, we're working our traps, we're working our scapulas, we're working our lats. And what that does is it creates rounded shoulders, very common in gymnastics. Now, to counter these rounded shoulders, what we need to do is open up space in your thoracic spine. So these up dogs are the best way to reverse the damage of hunching over at your desk, hunching over on your phone, hunching over when you do calisthenics, and to start to open up that heart, open up that chest, and correct your posture. So this stretch, I wish I knew it years ago, but it's something that I do all the time now, and it's really improved my overall body, my overall training, my overall physique. All right, number four, train the basics, train your foundations. For so many years when I started the sport, I was so ready to go do my handstand push-up. I was so ready to go do the muscle up into the trick, into the spin, into the this and the that, that I didn't build up the strength to be as good of an athlete as I could. Recently, I've been focusing on clean form muscle-ups, clean form pull-ups, clean form push-ups and explosive push-ups, clean form handstand push-ups. And as I've started building up the strength to do these slow with stability, with perfect form, it has made my explosiveness that much better when it comes to the big tricks. It has made me that much more dynamic of an athlete. So don't ignore the push-ups and the pull-ups because they're boring. They are the means to the bigger picture. They're the means to make you that much better of an athlete. All right, number five. This one's a little bit random, but do not sit on the couch. Now, I know what you're thinking. How does this apply to calisthenics? Well, first off, we all know that sitting is just not good for you. You're sitting, you're hunched, your posture is poor. 
But what I started doing, when I stopped sitting on the couch, I started just naturally and organically stretching. I started playing on my hands a little bit more. I started playing in inversions or different handstands more frequently. So all of the time spent on a couch, one hour, two hours, three hours per day, now translated to one to three hours of me actively making my body better for the sport that I love. So if you remove that couch time, you turn it into floor time, who knows what you can do, but it's just so much more productive than what you can do on the couch. Stretch, do push-ups, play on your hands, do anything other than nothing. Now, in addition to not sitting on the couch comes number six, owning your own parallel bars. If you want to build the strength for planche, if you want to build the strength for even L-sit, if you want to build the strength for a handstand push-up, the best way to train that is on parallel bars. When you're on a parallel bar, your wrist is not in flexion, so you have more strength because you have a straight wrist. When you're on the floor, your wrist is bent, so it's a little bit more activation in the forearms. By using parallel bars, you can also get even deeper on your push-ups or your handstand push-ups because you can go below where you could go on the floor, especially if the bars are 6, 12, or 24 inches off the ground, whatever height. So get yourself a pair of parallel bars and make sure that you're home training because you spend so much time at home, why not use that time to further your skills in the sport that you love? All right, number seven might be the most important of all of them, which is understand the human anatomy. For every exercise you're doing, you're performing a movement that requires different muscles. You're generating power, you're generating force, and that all comes from the way that you choose to move. A lot of people start to slowly understand anatomy bit by bit as they get injured. Every time you get injured, you see a specialist and they break down how the body moves. But think about this, if you already knew how the body moved, perhaps you might not get injured. Right? A lot of people perform exercises with poor form because they're being lazy. They don't wanna exercise as much effort as necessary to perform it in good form. So lazy minds, lazy bodies create bad form and it's really just a lack of understanding of how the body moves and how we generate power. So the more that you can understand that, whether researching or reading on Google or basically asking professionals and working with them, the better off you're gonna be as an athlete forever for the longevity of your existence in exercise, in fitness, in sports, it is important to have a great understanding of this vessel that moves it. Number eight, so important and something that I honestly wish that I did even more frequently now and definitely something that I wish I knew 10 years ago when I started the sport of calisthenics and that is to start foam rolling. By using a foam roller, you can break up the fascia in your body. You can create space. A lot of people think flexibility and stretching is the only way to loosen up and create space in the body, but no, you're incorrect. Aggressive myofascial release, which is the fascia of your body releasing that, and deep tissue muscle massage can break up the lactic acid in your body, helping you recover quicker, helping you open up space, helping you increase your range of motion and your mobility, and basically giving you all of the tools that you need to be an athlete so that you can train every day, you can recover quicker, and you can move better. Get yourself a foam roll. If the ones with squishy foam are too easy, then get one without foam foam like I have so that it can really dig into your body as necessary. Now while foam rolling, don't fight it. Try to breathe, try to release, and try to relax. That's the goal. All right, so that does it. Those are the eight things that I wish I knew when I started calisthenics. And if you're a beginner, intermediate, or anywhere within your journey of the sport, now you know those things too. Hopefully they can help you shorten the learning curve, avoid injury, and become that much better of an athlete. Guys, as always with this YouTube game, hit that like, hit that subscribe, share this video with somebody that you think it'll help, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.